Good afternoon. It is Kara Coffey of the Ministry of Uncovered No More. I just pulled Awa's movement for a poem within Favorite Poems Old and New. Selected for Boys and Girls by Helen Ferris. And I'm glad I'm a girl. There is a distinct difference between being a girl and a woman. And I think even bearing children, I have always been a girl, which means I do not see the inequalities forced upon womanhood that America requires to just live in this day and age. But it's been worse at other times, so I'm not saying that I don't appreciate the evolution of time. But we have taken some steps backward, haven't we? America. This is Texas. A couple of three estates have taken even more than one step backwards. There comes a point in a life, some of us anyway, and I think my point has come where I say goodbye. Other than the weeping, than the lighting of candles and incense, and the continuing on in this journey, I say goodbye to politics, machinations, protestations. In some ways, I suppose you can call it giving up. In other ways, I suppose I'm being made one with that which I truly am, the quietest, the one who knows how it should be and always did. And there comes a point, I'm telling you, in a life like mine where it's just like after Jesus was resurrected. And for the first time ever, there's only five people in this house here in Maynard, I was able to go to each separate one and minister to them the truth of what happened yesterday. And it's the same as the end of the beginning and between the Gospels and the Book of Acts where I have seen saints walking around. But he's not a saint. He's the king, and I've seen him walking around too, or driving around, whichever one you want to pick. I've seen both. And he's seen me. So keep that in mind when Kara says it. Keep that in mind. And I will say no more about that. Um, I'm going to read a poem from this book because I'm a girl and I care about you in this innocence. I care about you whether you've hurt people or not because you're human. And the thing is, is you take advantage of us. Many of you do in America. So anyway, I'm going to just talk to those of us who know that we're the turtle dove and that we don't matter to anybody, but we do matter and we know we have a voice and so we speak out as best as we can. Sometimes we go away, sometimes we come back. When your voice is with you, and I being tried Judah elect, <sighs> well, 
It's a quote somebody sent me from a poem I was ministering. And it's from um, Elizabeth Barrett and Robert Browning, their book that I'm perusing. I've decided to go from front to back now, skipping the poems that uh, I have already arted. But um, basically, we have much to learn and we have much to forget. I will add to the Barrett Brownings and say we have much to remember of him, my goodness. So when you see me, see, he said, when you have seen me, you have seen the Father. When you see me, you're seeing a modern day Mary Magdalene. For I have seen the Lord. And he has seen to it at times that I'm the only one in my conscious, conscious presence of people. So have some practice. On Twitter, one of my accounts is Madame Guyon because I submitted back to my father Watchman Nee, but I've already released a YouTube. I can't read Watchman Nee. It's too legalistic. But it is where his people in Asia are, probably still. They're still persecuted for their house church movement. Communism doesn't like Christianity. Uh, that is extremely mild statement. That's an extremely mild statement. Um, but Dad cleaved to the teachings of Watchman Nee, and so does his daughter. And I don't really know that I was conscious of it until I got another copy of it, my own, and then read a little bit of it and was introduced to his true mentor, who was Madame Guyon. My dad would not have enacted anything upon that because my dad was a misogynist and then not. In, I'm the only daughter he had in, in his private life. He never, ever, ever controlled me. He now has regret in his life, save for his grandchildren. It is a choice. I have seen my father too, so don't argue with me. <clears throat> so that's who I remain on Twitter when you see me in coffee shops. Things like that. Keep that in mind. When I enter the congregation, that has been prepared for me. I'm Tara, the Archangel. So the poem reads like this. I'll come back down to earth as Kara and Coffee of the Ministry of Uncovering the Mind. Leisure. William H. Davies. What is this life if, full of care, we have no time to stand and stare? No time to stand beneath the bows and stare as long as sheep or cows. No time to see when woods we pass, where squirrels hide their nuts in grass. No time to see in broad daylight, streams full of stars like skies at night. No time to turn at beauty's glance and watch her feet how they can dance. No time to wait till her mouth can enrich that smile her eyes began. A poor life this if, full of care. We have no time to stand and stare. I just released my own poem written this morning. It was a blessing, a great blessing. I was at Starbucks and it just came forth. I 
finally have gotten my things together to where when I am somewhere, I have the proper implements for my poetry and others' poetry. And I told someone at another coffee shop in another city just on Wednesday, because he said, oh, it's Longfellow. I said, yes, yes, Longfellow, I believe, is for the rest of my life. And he is. And he has touched something in my core. And I can tell you that the ma master was able to answer it. He had to wait until someone witnessed the horror of womanhood tried you to elect come roaring out of my insides last week around well, it may, yeah, I think it was last week. It was just directly after my birthday. And then he turned, returned to me 40 years. He returned to me to the age of 16. So you really don't have Kara and coffee of the ministry and the oven cover no more anymore. But you do have a nice lady named Kara Coffee. I hope you can awake to who I really am, if you know me. The only reason I say I hope is because he's done something to show me that I need to go ahead and hope again. Because in some zones of my life, he's the only one I can trust. And that's what I was gonna say. For the first time ever, all four people actually had to accept what I testified about him. Quietly, they know not to say anything. They know this is my testimony and his. That was a nice change from the past 14 years. And I hope it comforts him wherever he is. And as for you, learn to stare, my loves. Not at screens, my loves. Out the window. At the tree. At the dirt as you're pulling weeds. If you have to stay indoors, learn to stare at the candle flicker. As you color. But Kara, I'm afraid of what I will think. Yes, you will be afraid for a while. You will not like the thoughts that you have. You will be terrified sometimes and have to go check your phone because that's a security blanket to many people now. Let yourself be vulnerable in those times. Don't tell anybody else. Don't let yourself be discouraged. Take a break from learning to stare, as is written by Mr. Davies, and then go back to it. And let me close with this, it's free. You have to pay for that phone, that car. Worry is unending. Learning to stop and just breathe right there and say, I I'm here and I'm grateful that I'm here. Here. And I can sit here and I can choose not to worry and I can choose to just be for a moment. Learning not to listen to the voices in your head that are just telling you what to do and telling you how bad you are is a very conscious choice. Everybody thinks you've got to have a doctor to do that. Well, pinch yourself. No, you don't. Now, I'm not saying some people don't need all that. I'm not saying that at all. That's not my business, that's yours. And I wish you well. I'm talking about a life. Mine. And I'm telling you, that I have learned a lesson from other people. 
uh, Judd sister, or the Judd mother, committed suicide recently. I'm not judging her when I say she is a beautiful person, but she was driven to that. And the career was a large part of it. I, after all the demoralization and all the rejection, I have this to say, I'm learning. Not to listen to the cultish religions. I withstood. You see, I would be 49 years, quote unquote, in the Lord. So many Christians have mistreated me, used me, and controlled me that uh, I'm the only one that has the testimony I have, which is, wow, for the first time ever in this last 14 years, I could actually quietly and peacefully with acceptance, at least a little bit of acceptance, tell four other people that I have seen the Lord and his men. I have seen saints walking in Manor and um, I didn't get attacked for it. Now, the void is in the poem and in the room that I drew. For the poem, see, a poor life this is if, full of care, we have no time to stand and stare. And that's where I'm trying to say, we have time to contemplate, to appreciate. It should be a habit every day, no matter what. And I chose, or Ewas chose me, <laughs> movement. Now is the time to turn again and face the future reassured. Prepared to share the good fortune that comes your way. Um, <laughs> yes, you need to share your good fortune, but be careful. If you're someone like me, uh, sharing isn't a concept that I know how to deal with because my whole life is just was just required to be give. Give and be blamed. I have had literally almost no people who consistently nurtured me across a forty a, a fifty six year life. That's why I'm grateful that I've been returned to sixteen by the king. Have a nice day.